You know, it would have been great if this was a surprise because it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a surprise, just like Chris Johnston a couple weeks ago was supposed to be a surprise for everybody. Uh, but I got a phone call, a panicked phone call last night. It was a, I was heading to Canadian Tire around seven o'clock at night. And it's Steve. And he's right up close to his microphone on his phone. And he's like, uh, Adam, um, uh, should I have tweeted out that Tim and Sid are going to be on the show tomorrow? And I said, no, Steve. We told you in the group chat and publicly on Twitter that it was going to be a great, gigantic, fun surprise. And people were guessing with Brian Burke or somebody else. And uh, and Tim and Sid's names came up and whatever. And uh, he said, oh, uh, give me one sec. So he pulls the phone away from his face, deletes the tweet, and everybody knew. So, guys, it was supposed to be a surprise, but welcome back to the show. And we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> hey. Hi. <laughs> Good to Hello. see you guys. I love that Dangle's hiding as that entire intro is going. <laughs> is going I knew on. about I knew about your baby for four months before he arrived. Four months, and then finally, baby Jose shows up. I kept that shit a secret. I didn't tell anybody. Not on a viewing party where it came out either. I didn't say anything to a single soul, Dangle. Not a single. You telling a secret to Dangle is like watching David Ayers go in the crease. You don't know what's about to happen. You have he no won. idea. Yeah, but he wins anyway. <laughs> he, he won. Yeah. So he actually, he is a more successful NHL goaltender than I am a secret keeper. Good well, thing you don't work at Pfizer or Moderna because Russia would have had that thing like months ago. <laughs> <laughs> We've been all uh, over the net. They see they I, got it, so I don't know what you're talking about. It's a it's a, it's a good it's true. a good day. It's a good point. Uh, uh, CJ texted me. He's like, "What the hell did Dangle blow?" And I told him, and he's like, "Geez, he's like, baby brain's real." And I'm like, "No, this is just Steve. Don't do not blame this Steve on the brain. kid. That's yeah. Steve for 32 years." <laughs> what if it's uh, both? <laughs> what gentlemen and you're in trouble <laughs> so uh, tim and sid uh from the tim and sid the new tim and sid studios at tim and sid's house uh they are not in the same place believe it or not you guys don't spend 24 7 together but you guys are both in your basement i watch you every day and i gotta absolutely. ask it are, has it has it normalized at all like broadcasting from your basement not being in the same room does it feel normal yet uh or are you kind of like chomping at the bit to get back go sid tim um the the only the can i let's you know we're gonna be real here and i'll regret it later but let's be real here um i've never been eight months i haven't gotten used to the delay speaking to this man because that's not how we work it isn't so i have not gotten used to that we get crossed up every show because it happens um aside from that i i don't miss the commute Mm. Uh, there are some elements of it I'm fine with. Uh, I mean, Tim can play with his kid. Now I'm speaking for Tim. Tim can play with his kids when the weather was good. Like he'd, he'd spend time by the pool, as would I, actually. I'm, I'm guilty as well of that. Um, so there's some awesome parts to it, if I'm being frank. There's some awesome parts to it. But the, like Tim and I don't work this way. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, from a Hold communication on. standpoint, it's fucking weird. It's <laughs> been weird for eight months. And I'm just glad people are still watching. I think <laughs> we don't. We're not quite sure. Um, be honest. You love being at home. Like you, you put this like little like what I'm supposed to say thing on here. No, like, no, no. I, I, I don't miss the commute. Like I said, I don't miss the commute. I miss the Rogers calf. You, not gonna lie, I miss the Rogers calf. <laughs> Chicken fingers. Yeah. Miss the Rogers and calf. Burgers. Shout out Norm. Shout out. I miss Norm. Jess, and Jesse. It's, and it's, yeah. Was was anything more disgusting than when you worked with us than watching Sid walk down to that Rogers calf every day and do the same two things at that Rogers calf? Or was Or was inspiring? <laughs> it, was, it was heartbreaking to see him pick up something every day that you knew was just destroying his heart. <laughs> that was from the inside. It was rotting. And, th- and thoroughly enjoy it every time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jokes on you. I don't have a heart. Suck on that, Blake. <laughs> Suck on that. Uh, okay, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe you don't. Maybe you missed the Rogers cap. Other than that, I think Six Zero is having a blast. Uh, for, as for me, I don't like. I've tried to embrace it. Like I don't know the person that I am right now. Like I'm, I'm doing yoga. Like I'm meditating. Like I have no idea who the hell this person is. I, when we're done, I'm gonna. I have a, a wood burning fireplace. I'm gonna start a fire and do my work. Like I don't. I don't know who the hell this person is. 
that now works at home and does all these things, but this is who I am, and I have no idea who he is. I don't, like I don't him? mind him. I don't mind yeah. him. I don't mind him. He's a little healthier than the other guy. But <laughs> yeah, I want fat. I want fat Tim back. Give me fat Tim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's you know what, like you've got at least one person watching, and uh, I've, I've been watching the whole time because honestly, that's the, it's the. I mean, I've been watching for six years, but the the normalcy that it brings, right? It's sort of like there's something at least is still normal. It's still nice to have when you guys have Kendrick Perkins on and uh, and are making fun with him and like you know all the all the guests that you guys have on. It's sort of like there's still something we can we can still talk about things that are happening in the world and uh, and and it's not all COVID related. And I can remember actually like the last show that you guys did before this happened like really before you were kind of broadcasting from home and everything was sort of canceled i remember that last week and remember going in there was a leaf game that night that was canceled against nashville do you guys remember that and then i don't know the what thursday happened. yeah I, I vividly remember that oh, thursday, they had a morning yeah. skate guys they had a morning off. skate wow. yeah, tim, tim had tim was off yeah. that week it was messed up how it happened tim was off when the world burned. yeah <laughs> and like but i remember that i remember the wednesday night like it was yesterday the gold bear night. I remember the next yep. day. I, rem- I remember seeing Austin. There was never a more useless pregame scrum than when someone was asking Austin Matthews about this, this virus. And he's like, guys, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like, what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> and they asked, they ask, they're asking William Nylander. They're asking Jake Muzzin. It's like, what answer do you listen? I love the Leafs beat. There's some great people on it. I've known some of them a long time. It was just asinine what you were trying to pull because everyone knew that game wasn't happening that Thursday night. Everybody knew. It's pointless and, asking William Nylander about hockey, let alone it's the worst <laughs> epidemiology. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, man. That might be my favorite thing of the whole pandemic is people acting like they know a shred about epidemiology based on the five tweets that they read and didn't click on the story. So no. <laughs> before it all starts, hey, Austin Matthews, Willie Nylander, what do you think about the rise in coronavirus? <laughs> it's uh, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. So said was that so Babcock what, or was that Austin Matthews? What was that? It was what actually was Zach Hyman. Like yeah. it's just it's everyone. It's Zach everyone. Hyman's probably written thirty books over the last eight months. <laughs> yes. Oh, one hundred percent. You know, King team. Lear. Uh, King Lear was written. Adam, this is probably for you. King Lear was written during uh, one of the plagues. <laughs> When everything yes. was dirty. Yes. You know the, uh, in the, oh, was, yes. It was is that the a thing you black, know? Yeah, of oh, course. Was during the second Adam Black Plague. Yeah. Yep. S- he said, listen, <laughs> I don't know why, but he does. Can I get a history segment later in the pod, too? <laughs> <laughs> you want to fall asleep? No problem. Uh, <laughs> so what did you do that night? So you're like, you're, you're, you're seeing these pregame scrums kind of come in. And it, was it Donovan that was on for, for Tim? or Donovan was in the Thursday. Okay. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I was doing, but I'm more interested in like Tim had this whole different view of it. Like yeah. that Wednesday, Thursday night, McAuliffe, like what, what were you consuming? What were you watching? Were you following were it you? that closely? So, so my son had uh, surgery to remove his tonsils and adenoids oh. about a week before all this hit. Oh. And so just before March break, he was home for, we kind of, it kind of fell on, okay, he's going to miss two weeks of school. This is perfect. <laughs> this is perfect because he misses the week before March break. And then he'll just miss one week of school for this. So mm-hmm. I stayed home. My wife is a teacher. She can't stay home. So I stayed home with him for, for this. So I was just basically giving freezies and eating freezies and popsicles and watching the world melt down around me and go, <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? So I wasn't, to be honest with you, I, I saw it coming. I was really nervous. And then I turned everything off and folk in, sorry, Sid, including Tim and Sid and just focused on my son. And then I was like, Oh boy, like, what are we in for here? Like how long is this March break going to be? <laughs> turned out it was the longest March break ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, can, can you imagine having your friends turn your show off? <laughs> can you imagine can't imagine steve adam <laughs> jesse can you, you remember remember that? Ice do you remember that final ice serving steve beforehand you know that probably the most watched i do the- i do remember <laughs> let's steve let's lay it out there you've been planning a coup on merrick the entire time like have you not <laughs> absolutely let's be real Come every on. time every time like i go to like stab him in the back he just turns around really fast and tells me about something like 
hockey in 1954. And I'm he's, a like, hockey this right. is, he's a hockey cyborg. This guy is so cyborg. many steps ahead of me. Like this guy. Hey, do you remember that fight between like Billy McFist Williamson? And I'm like, I don't know who that is, Jeff. I don't know who that is. And then he shows me and it's an amazing fight. So you, you is that not the worst him. nickname ever? McFist? Billy McFist Williamson. <laughs> I've been playing too much Sounds like that. a new meal at McDonald's. Yeah. I would eat the McFist. It will all be bad. <laughs> Listen, it's been a tough eat eight months. I'll eat the McFist. <laughs> Give me the McFist. I want it. All right. <laughs> Does it come with a toy? <laughs> it is the toy. And you'll like it. I think we've all been eating the McFist for eight months here, is what I think. That's it's what I think. Yeah. To shut up and eat it. <laughs> I want t-shirts made up. I'll eat the McFist. <laughs> <laughs> all five of us get it. We could. You know what? We're going to get it done for the holidays. Yeah, let's get it. Well, Christmas uh, McFist. I, want, like, uh, little, Christmas. I was going to keep it a secret, but Dangle would have found out. So fuck it. Right. Just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Uh, well, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's fascinating because like, you know, it, it's a. It's just it, ruined a bunch of influencer money for a bunch of people. <laughs> right now. All of us here. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Why, Tim? Has it been a tough year? <laughs> I had a bunch of Christmas campaigns planned on my Instagram, you jerks. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the you know the thing I think, guys, like it's fascinating to hear your perspective on it because all of a sudden you're like you're you're on the air in a in a in a genre that it's like it's very in the now. Your things break during your show. You're on at the perfect time for sports because things happen. You know, trade. Uh, you know, the trade deadline will wrap up around the time that your show starts. Uh, you know, free agency, whenever that happens, it, you know, basketball, hockey, whatever, it's always kind of, you, you've got a ton of news at the beginning and then you're going right into game time. You know, when those games are canceled, Sid, like, what did you guys even, what, it, how do you plan a show? Well, so the Wednesday, like you could feel it and Tim alluded to it, like you could feel it coming Wednesday. Yeah. Because dirt, like in Tuesday and, and Wednesday afternoon, the lead up, like if you remember San Jose had basically shut down large gatherings, like it was building. Like Washington State was already hammered with it. Parts of California were were cautious. I believe Col the Blue Jackets said no fans. They were going to yeah. play the Penguins, I think. Yeah. So there was there was pockets where things were happening. So Wednesday night hits. You get the tweet from Shams. Rudy Gobert has tested positive for COVID, and I'm like, Oof. well, I know we're going to talk about tomorrow. <laughs> so we get I get in. Everyone's in a haze. And everyone's quite frankly scared. Like, yeah. a lot of us are scared. But sure, let's do a two-hour sports show. So thankfully, Donovan um, was in. Donovan Bennett is amazing. Frege, Elliot Freeman came in. And we went through everything that had been shut down. It was the darkest day in sports history. Because everything ended. March Madness, everything. And we were getting, like the manager of Arsenal was getting COVID positive during the show. Like you mentioned news breaking during the show. It was one. And then Ken King of the flames died. Yes. Like yes. in the six thirty area of that Thursday, I'll never forget that day. And, and then like we had Berkey on the show. We didn't know if Berkey knew. I didn't know if I could bring it up. So then Thursday show ends. And I had a haircut that night. Not important, but I thought I'd throw it in. So <laughs> I went to the I went to the barber. Just a side note, we're all friends here. I love how serious yeah. he's become after the McFist stuff. But go ahead. The McFist. Okay. Gotta Continue. balance it out. <laughs> then I thought about what we're doing for Friday show and I got the McFist. Um <laughs> I'm not gonna say that again, I swear to God. That's the last time. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I was I'm not sorry. ready. All right. I'm sorry. Sorry, so then, but, but then like Friday was reality about like what the show Tim and I do. And I'm mm -hmm. sure you guys were sitting there thinking the same thing. I heard your shows. You were thinking the same thing. Now mm -hmm. what? Now what? So Faisal, Faisal Kamiza was kind enough to be in on the Friday. The place is almost a ghost town at this point. And again, everyone's, everyone's scared. But sure, let's do a two-hour show. No problem. And I'm convinced if I would have said I'm not going in Friday, Tim and Sid would have, the hiatus would have started Friday. And I think the rest of the company would have started Friday because I didn't come in on the Monday because I wasn't feeling great and basically everything shut down. Right. So I had a bit more on my shoulders than I thought, but I came in the Friday. 
So, okay, you're coming in. Now, what are we doing? Good question. No fucking clue. So we, we phase lined, we talked for a few segments and then we're like, okay, let's just run Jose Batista's bat flip inning in the six hour. Because why That's not? It's a good idea. Yeah. Because who's going to call us on it? Who's going to call us on it? All the other great ideas coming in. Who's going to call us on it? So, yeah. <laughs> was fun. so we ran it. It, 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 went, it went over, which was nice. And then we, I believe in the back end, Bettman was on with Merrick on Hockey Central at noon that day. So we just kind of ran that to get to seven. Mm-hmm. Seven o'clock hits. The Tim and Sid team comes in and we're all looking at each other. And I feel like it's like someone's got to sit. We're all, every, no one knows what's about to happen here. Cause during the show, they, they, they shut down schools in Ontario. Like there was heavy news coming down during that show as well. So no one knows what Monday's, no one knows what tomorrow's going to look like. And I think I looked, Tim, I've never told you this. I looked around and I felt like I need to say something. And I said, well, not sure about Monday. Let's wait and see. That was my speech. <laughs> that was my you, speech. Always I've inspiring. never told you. <laughs> Always right? inspiring. Wow. Yeah. Right? Oh, my God. Right? Like, you do the like, like, funeral? <laughs> I'm at the top of the hill at Gettysburg, Adam, and I'm like, fuck these guys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham Hashtag Chico. history. Hashtag history. <laughs> so, so then over the weekend, I don't know if I was like psychosomatic, but I felt a cold or something. I don't know. I don't think it was real, but I didn't feel good. And I'm seeing Andrew Cuomo talk for two hours about how the world's oh. ending and doing it, but in like a very relatable way, right? Like he was very nice about it. Um, and I'm like, it was Saturday afternoon. I said to my wife, I don't feel great. So Sunday, I put out the feelers to the guys because Tim's off the next week. Okay. Tim took two weeks. And I'm like, okay, Monday's not, I don't feel safe. Monday's not happening. So they're like, oh, okay, I hope you feel better. Can you do three hours of radio a day alone? Ooh. And I'm like, um, well, let's back up here and, and work this problem through. First off, how do I do that? Secondly, how the fuck do I do that? Thirdly, They're like, uh, thirdly, how the fuck do I do that? I was going to make the McDonald's reference again. I'm going to avoid it, but thank you for teaming <laughs> me up for that, Tim. You know what you're doing. Uh. Um, sorry, <laughs> Oh, uh, no, no, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. So, so they're like, so they're like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm finding this amusing. Drop. Go ahead. Talk about the it's three drop. hour show that you get. Yeah. Three hour show. All right. Just they're, off mic. <laughs> they're like, they're like, the can show. you do, Adam, can you do three show. hours? <laughs> yeah, it was basically the show. Um, I had to shout out to JD Bunkus. I physically drove to his place downtown to pick up what we call on the radio, a tie line so I can hook up online. Mm-hmm. and jd's i'm not gonna get into it he's got his own worries and they're serious but he was very nice and he helped me out he cleaned this thing he didn't have to i bring it back i go from mississauga to toronto back on the monday again i'm not feeling great tuesday we were up i think tim jumped on like three of those shows that week yeah i felt bad and it was a, it was what are you gonna do like yeah. it was yeah. timing like no but I, I appreciated him jumping on as a, jeff as a party was amazing of Sportsnet. He was absolutely amazing. I wouldn't have gotten through it. And, and for subsequent weeks, Tim and I wouldn't have gotten through it. <laughs> uh, seriously. Like you guys know what it was like. Like you weren't oh. every day, but you guys were pumping out pots. Like I'm, I'm, I listen to you guys a lot. And it was one of the most challenging things. And not just for me, but for Blair and Brunt and writer's block and Merrick and good show and everybody. It was one of the most challenging moments. Cause we're, not only are we scared, but find a way to tee up like the NFL draft in April. Yeah. So you're working, you're working oh. through all those emotions and it's like, I'm, I'll, I'll, we'll look back and laugh. I wasn't laughing at the time, but we'll look no. back and laugh. And it was one of the more challenging, prouder moments for me and Tim and the people with us to get through. It was nuts, nuts. And I was, I was very happy we did because I think it made me a little bit better as a broadcaster. And maybe not as a person, I'm still a D bag, but, but as a broadcaster, maybe. But. <laughs> uh, I remember the only thing about all that is I, I just, so I was off for the week before March break and then I was off for March break with my family. And uh, I started calling into the show just because I felt awful. But I remember also saying to Sid, uh, I, maybe, maybe more than once, 
did you volunteer to do a three hour show with no sports? <laughs> like, how did we find ourselves doing a three hour <laughs> sports show with no sports? <laughs> can, can I tell yeah. you, can I tell you what was given to me? True story. If you, you can say no, that means every other show goes four hours. Ooh. Ooh. Well, Think you know what answer you're taking. <laughs> oh, I wanted to bail. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but like four hours with no content is 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 forms of torture in certain countries. Like the UN doesn't sanction it. Yep. So I would like, what choice what? do you have? But Tim Tim's question was valid. <laughs> Did you volunteer? <laughs> the answer, I didn't feel like I volunteered. I felt like I was kind of told to do it, or else other people's sanity would die a horrible death. So, and you uh, did it again, every day. I'm, that's the crazy we, part. I did it initially every day. We eventually did it every day, and it was uh, challenging. But again, we'll laugh at it one day. I have enough alcohol here to get me through it, <laughs> so I'm I'm good. Yeah, we only luckily only had to do the two hour two hours twice weekly. Uh, three we hours every day is eat, a lot. Uh, we did have a hot dog eating contest in we did. Uh, late oh, nice. March because that we had awesome. nothing to talk about. Oh, so. we and I won. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it's surprisingly difficult to to eat that much. Uh, I think Sid, I think Sid, you watched it, didn't you? <laughs> it came in. For yeah, the you know what? That was the first thing I've ever watched food wise where I'm like, that's disgusting. I don't want any part of that. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty <laughs> bad. Uh, was um, Adam well, and I actually tied, but the tie breaker was he threw up right it's true was there really a winner that's a good point <laughs> yeah no, yes me everybody there's no winner. everybody lost everybody, everybody lost, lost eventually no, <laughs> i won that's <laughs> that is how it works i win um, so little <laughs> I so won. You, you know it's that it's anyway it's it's amazing to see you know how everybody's had to adjust to this you guys have obviously done a great job and it's funny i was uh, i was watching last week and i had to bring this up because you guys had buble on and you're comparing him to Dangle in terms of his Canuck fandom. And I know that he said that he's more intense than Steve. Did you believe him when he said it? No. No. No, there's, a, there's no, I mean, there, how could you possibly be more intense than Dangle? Like, I don't, I don't even, I haven't even watched the game with you, but I know I would hate it. Like, I would, I know, would. That, yeah, I, so the rule in my house, this is true. The rule in my house with my old man was the only time you could talk was during commercial. Oh. <laughs> so we would watch the game together. We would be quiet so that we could break down stuff. And then in the commercial break, we would have, con I, to this day, have never watched a big game in a bar because I can't stand watching games with people like Steve oh. Dangle. Wow. Now, after the game. Wow. You know, wow. It's all game, coming out, Steve. It's all coming out now. <laughs> wow. Now, after the Listen, game. Listen, I'm sorry I blew the secret. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My God, guys. What the but after wow. the game, I will tune in. So listen, I like I I this is honest to God. Like, and and maybe Dangle, you you didn't do this when you were younger, but my biggest pet peeve is watching a power play and hear 15,000 people yell, shoot. So oh, I'm that guy. Yeah, I'm a little bit that guy. <laughs> Tim is just firing darts <laughs> right away. <laughs> Actually, like, Neo, wow. this is, I'm not saying this to be mean, but this past season with the Leafs power play, it would get to shoot. the point. It would get to a certain <laughs> player at the point and I would shout pass. Barry, yeah. Right. <laughs> and Barry pass. slap shot off the knee. Slap Four shot off the knee. murderers are wide open. Yeah, right at the shins. Uh, <laughs> I would love to see the poll on who, like, who, like hockey fans, do you yell shoot on the power play and see what the number is. That's we should definitely is shoot. Not the the hockey equivalent of golf's get in the hole. Get the <laughs> I think it is. I think and people it is. prolong the shoot too. Shoot! <laughs> Except getting the hole is after the action. It'd be like <laughs> Tigers trying to set a pot. <laughs> you know, like can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Pot! Do it! Hurry! Game's about speed. <laughs> You're like, Put the spin on you. There's no spin. <laughs> the hole is open. Pot! Pins out! Pins out! <laughs> Tyson Berry, pot for God's sakes! Pot! <laughs> Just do you blew it again! There he goes! 
There you can't depend on him. You can't depend on. <laughs> well, Calling for a trade in golf. <laughs> it was. Uh, it so was. I want to be golf trade tree. Dangle or <laughs> golf trade tree right. for Dangle. Trade I like tree. it. <laughs> I'll uh, watch after the game. It's funny and amusing, and I think that's Steve's. To be fair, we, we've never seen Buble in that state, though. Let's be honest. That's true. Here. That's true. There is not. This is not a fair comparison. We haven't. We've seen Buble and Merry Christmas. We haven't. We've seen. We've seen Dangle at his best what? and worst. <laughs> like, we don't know. The, the Merry the Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> It's my best Buble impression. That's pretty, that's pretty ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Christmas, boom. By my record. That's Buble, Buble, not Buble. Buble. Buble's Buble. invading my workplace. Ah, yeah, there you go. Adam, like, I Adam need to release you. a Christmas album to steal it from him. <laughs> Is it good, Adam? Is it good? Really good. And I'm a, I'll, be, I'll be fully honest. I am addicted to uh, sparkling water. I have a soda stream and everything, but these are always the best. The bubbly Buble things, they're really actually very good. And we're not right. getting paid to do that. I'm just, I'm just addicted. Oh, we flavored, are. Is flavored water? Is that what it it's is? Flavored sparkling water. Um, I don't drink much. I don't water. smoke. Uh, so I have, uh, I have that. You don't drink coffee. The I drink hours coffee. You work? Yeah. I drink okay, coffee. Okay. Um, yeah, I need great. that in the morning. I have two large coffees from McDonald's actually, and uh, Jesse consistently makes fun of me for it because yeah, um, it's, it's sometimes it's three extra large coffees in the span of like four hours. It's a great. Okay, that's stupid. Did, not that's, a morning guy. Oh, I'm not hating that at all. That's I'm Sid. not hating that at all. Thank you. Sid, Thank you. When Sid. we did the radio show, Sid would have a coffee an hour. Start of each but, hour. But smalls. Like I would. Oh, he's oh, right. Yeah, I would have three. <laughs> no, it's different. <laughs> it's like a shot. It's like a shot at a grocery store sample. It's nothing. It's nothing. I lost my hair in the back just by accident. Had nothing to do with all the caffeine. <laughs> you misplaced it. I must have had a lot of coffee. Then. Misplaced it. I put it away. I put it away. It's you know what? It's a lot. It's it's the the early morning thing. Uh, is the it's it's the best except for the time. Uh, everything else about it rules. It's just it's just that's that's the thing that happens. But you know, like it's funny, um, guys. When when uh, uh, <laughs> when I, I remember watching when you guys were just. Like it was just radio, but you were available on video. I don't even remember how that used to work. They would just simulcast you on Sportsnet, right? They just simulcast the whole show in the old studios. You mean the Fan Five Ninety Studio? Yeah, the Fan. Sorry, when you were yeah, yeah. you were a fan. So they would. Oh, they had two yeah. cameras. That they had two cameras that we could never uh, we could never switch to properly uh, in the studio, <laughs> and they'd put us up on Sportsnet three hundred and sixty, and people people started to watch. And then they're like, "Let's put it on somewhere else," and they put it on somewhere else. So that's how we ended up on Sportsnet proper, but. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I do. Just miss, two cameras uh, is your answer, Adam. Two, two cameras. <laughs> two cameras. <laughs> they, just, cameras. <laughs> they just simulcast with the two cameras that were sitting in there because Bob was on TV. I remember uh, they. So they threw these. They used to throw these big Rogers bashes around <laughs> Canadian Music Week, and and I remember they were talking about. They had a consultant on, and they were talking about sticky content, which is a really great name for a porno uh but it's a uh, <laughs> it's one of those it's things guys like he's walking up his old man he's like sticky he's like sticky content is this and then he played the video of you guys uh when uh the canadians won the gold medal uh gold medal to the face clip which you guys have talked about it time and time and time again but i just remember thinking i remember looking at that going god i don't i don't know if i've ever had that much energy in my life and and I think it's probably now the coffees make sense, Sid. It makes sense. <laughs> the coffees make sense. By the way, I love how they would play our clips of those parties yet never invite us. Why were you not invited? It was, <laughs> it was great. That's always great to hear. I hear that a lot. Like, boy, you should have been at that party. We talked about you a lot. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing Thank was you. we used to do those shows and they would have parties behind us. They would have Christmas parties. They would have holiday oh, parties. They would have... Uh, like setups, but so that, <laughs> one of my favorite shows of all time was we're we're sitting there doing the show and they're setting up for the party that's about to take place behind us. While how many staff it. would you say, Tim? Like seven, eight, like a full, like a lot of people setting up. Would you say? Yeah, there would lot. be there would be like ten people setting up, and then eventually yeah. there'd be like a hundred people in the lobby behind us, like drinking, laughing, and having a good time while we were trying to do a show, mm -hmm. and we, <laughs> we could see them now. We, we had eventually got to join those parties, so it wasn't terrible. But one time, um, the staff is setting up, and Sid got so hyper on his one coffee that he decided he was going to go dance with one of the staff members who had no idea that she was about to be on TV nationally. Well, they had they had the camera. There was one camera in that hallway, <laughs> like perfectly placed. So I, I saw... I saw Maria and I'm like, I got to dance. So I'm, I start doing like a running man 
next to her. She has no idea what's going on. <laughs> She's on national TV. I shouldn't have done it. Like in hindsight, I shouldn't have done it. But I was it was a Friday. It was in my final coffee. I'm let loose here. I'm let loose. <laughs> right. <laughs> That was fun. Coffee. That's, that was that's, fun. Uh, that's a lawless coffee. It is sure is. You know, you know, it's funny that that studio was a bit of a fishbowl too. I like I I did a month there. Like I filled in on mornings and stuff like that. And I remember uh Scott Moore, who used to be the head of Sportsnet, um, and is now running, I think, LeBron James's broadcast network, which yeah. is yeah. crazy. Um, he he had a bit of a sense of humor, and I was terribly nervous. And my first day he walks up and he kind of points to me through this the thing, and he's very serious face. And uh, I'm like, oh, hi, like, hey, how are you? You know, I hope it's going OK. And he's like, and then he just gave me the finger. <laughs> <laughs> Good Wasn't guy. that you and me's first day? That was not. That was um, no? that was morning's first day. Because like, our first day too. was Kawhi trade. That was our first day on the fan. Uh, yep. We didn't know we were going to talk about the Kawhi was traded to Toronto. And then, yeah, and then that was the morning show where it was like the real pressure was on. So I thought, Whoa. Uh, anyway, guys, you know, I, I want to talk about some of the stuff going on in sports right now, because there's obviously... <laughs> So much happening, so much that we don't know. Um, we don't know when the season comes. I do want to ask you about that. But first, I think what's most important is we talk about the retro reverse jerseys or the oh. reverse retro, whatever they're called, uh, in the NHL. Likes, dislikes. Did anybody knock it out of the park in your estimation? And who flunked this test? Uh, I mean, I got the Leaf. I, the Leaf one right here. They sent a few to Tim and I. So oh, you I got, got to, a what? I got... I got Leafs. Oh, cool. It's more for the show, but who knows when we're going back, so I will claim them for this moment. Uh, they sent me Oilers, Canucks. The Canucks is not good. No. And I got the Leafs here. Tim has had – the Habs one's really nice. Yeah. But I got the Leafs one. Oh, that's what it looks like. Okay. A little it's bit better. better in, it's better in person than it looked online, right? if I'm being honest. It didn't look good. It looks better on this feed than it looks online. Yeah. It looks, let me move the mic. Like, it looks good. It looks solid. Huh. It's I'll stand by where I put it in the rankings. Out of the Canadian teams, I have it fifth. What do you have below it? Uh, the you have Canucks. Jets above this? You have uh, Jets above that jersey? Yeah. Really? No, I have Jets let's, below. Hey, guys, let's oh. make it gray. Great idea. <laughs> it's gray. Good meeting. The only thing gray. I would change about my ranking is I had Jets last. No, Jets is sixth. The Canucks one. The Jets one is boring. The Canucks one is objectively ugly. Like, the they should have gone ninth. Really I don't know if they were The Habs one's wrecked. That's yeah, a that's nice jersey. Nice. I had the Habs fourth. I don't know. It works. It Not, works really well. It works really well. It's great. Yeah. It's a great it gives, it gives off of the sweater vibe. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like the poem. Wow. You know? yeah. What a good way the of sweater. putting it. Yeah. Or as yeah. I say there, le sweater. <laughs> as I say. Very good. Uh, Sid's French corner. I, <laughs> I like this. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's it. It's funny. The uh, The Flames. Knocking it out of the park, I thought, with the horse. Uh, you didn't really? like that? Mm. Oh, it's my locally, I, locally, locally, I know it's big. I never took to that logo. Really? I never took to that logo. But it's sell, it's doing well. God bless them. They made they they know the market better than if, I in Calgary. If, but if they didn't do the if they didn't go retro with their normal, because their normal jersey is basically retro now. Like yeah. they went back to if they hadn't have done that, it would have been that flaming sea that everyone loves, but they they kind of went the other way. So there's the uh Oh. The People in Calgary wow. love it, man. I'm not. I'm not going to fight them on it. Like I like they the last love season. it. I just. I never. I never took to it. The, the Oilers yeah. one is just all white. I like the Oilers one too, actually. It's Let clean. One up. It's very the Detroit clean. one. Very... The Detroit one didn't make sense to me. I know we're going Canadian here, but that it's looks pajamas. okay. That that's not bad. It's not bad. That right? one's good. The Habs yeah. one is better. The the, uh, the Nordiques one, even though it's a slap in the face to Quebec City one. Like we all know that that's Number the best one. jersey. The Colorado jersey is the. I like the Los Angeles Kings old Kings. school too. Yeah, Kings is very to me, really cool. But uh, I thought Colorado knocked it out of the park. But they knocked it out of the park by ripping off <laughs> a, a classic logo that every Canadian is yearning for. And maybe with the global pandemic forcing some of the teams that we all know don't really care about hockey but are still in the league to maybe sell a team to a place like Quebec City. But we can do you all... think Do you think that's going to happen, guys? Like, is I know crazier things have happened. Like, the idea that Winnipeg could have a team was insane until they got one. Right. Uh, and obviously, they're owned by, I think, the 50th richest family in the world, partially. So, you know, it doesn't matter, really, if they make any money. But, you know, when it comes to Quebec City, uh, Jeremy Jacobs has been on the record uh, and said, like, it's a challenge to make money there. Um, are there. Are there owners that are rich enough to set... Twenty, thirty million dollars on fire every year to have a team in Quebec City. Well, let, let me put it this way, and Tim, I'm interested in your take. If you're Rogers and you already paid five billion for this deal, 
And when this deal comes up, whether you're TSN or your Rogers or held the zone, I don't know who else would be in on that. And maybe the if score. you were to, if you were to add the score podcast, <laughs> the score podcast, the dangle the podcast, right. dangle podcast, the dangle podcast gets the Wednesday evening game <laughs> from Anaheim every week. You guys pay for that one. All right. Oh, I said, all right, all right. There you go. That's that's ice surfing. You'll watch. Ice surfing. I call it. But if you if you're Sorry, if you're a Canadian, <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's McCallum's bread and butter. The I court surfing. Ice surfing was an original idea. Yeah. 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 Was <laughs> ice. No, true story. It ice was. surfing started at the score television network for like a night and when oh. when other rights holders realize this they're like you need to stop this immediately <laughs> oh and they did steve coolies was doing a great job with it it was going to be a great show <laughs> and they couldn't it's like the heavy hitters said listen we draw the line at post game pat quinn news conferences that's it that's all you guys <laughs> <Wow>. can have <laughs> because it was a great idea concept gord stelic was on the panel tim who oh. was it was stelic and Led, was well, Ludzi on the panel? Yeah, no, I think it was it was mainly Coolius and and Stellick to start off. It was and a great. They, con- it was sorry. They poo pooed the idea, and I got my big break because they needed basketball in ice surfing, <laughs> so, so they <laughs> would throw it to McAuliffe. Still was somewhat a, almost a full head of hair. Almost. And if that almost. didn't work, they were going to give me cricket surfing. <laughs> I was going to do that. Show. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get diamond surfing. Or surfing. No. Or just <laughs> surfing, period. Just but but if you, my point is, if you add an eighth Canadian team, mm-hmm. what is that contract worth in Canada? Ooh. Whether it's, whether it's moving the team, as Tim suggested earlier this week, expansion. I was on the expansion tip. I don't know if it's going to happen. But if you add an eighth Canadian team to that contract, mm-hmm. considering the next four years, no one's going to make money. Yep. Like, what's that worth? I think it's worth a lot. Here's here's yeah. here's my take on this, and and this is, I think that's a that's a, a play. But how did Winnipeg get there? There was a market that didn't really love hockey at all, and, and they were they were burning money, mm-hmm. and someone said we'll burn the money for you. And Gary Bettman had to go kicking and screaming to Winnipeg for I'll never forget that press conference. Do you remember that, Sid? When Gary, Gary Bettman, Bettman showed up I've never Winnipeg? seen Gary Bettman. <clears throat> want to have a press conference less in my life really he did not want to go there watch that admit that he was wrong about the market of winnipeg now different like different financials and it was a different scenario but it was he was not he basically said in the press conference that thing better be full every night he essentially said that yeah so we're going back to win yeah he didn't say it like eddie ochick did and he said we're going back to winnipeg no it was it was didn't have that energy it was we're going back to winnipeg but if I see half the upper bowl empty, I'm yanking it. Is a, it, it Tim's right. Watch it. It's wow. one of the infamous it's, Gary Bettman media veils in history. It's it unbelievable. But, but my point about all this is that there are, te- there are people that are willing to burn money for sports teams. And for hockey, the only place that, that is more willing to burn money for hockey is Canada. Right? Like, it's not – name your market. I don't want to name a team and piss them off by saying it here. But think of every market that you know really doesn't love hockey. Mm-hmm. Like, are those owners willing in this global pandemic where it feels like, I mean, we're talking about now 13 more percent coming off of the player. Like, there is going to be lost money. And in all the chaos, there is opportunity. And I wouldn't be surprised if one of those markets, one of those owners goes, what are we doing here? Like, we thought we were going to make money on this thing. We're going to lose money on hockey. No, I'm not doing that. And they they just might sell the team to somewhere where they'll say, like you said, can we lose a little bit of money? Do we have, I don't know, Tebea? Do they own a piece of that building there? Would that help them? Mm-hmm. Do they own rights? Check, 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 check. So, I mean, I think it's kind of, it's way out there right now. But once you start doing the math on some of this stuff, it doesn't seem that far out there. Hmm. Wow. Wow, and 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 you think that they maybe would go go for that rather than like a new market like Kansas? I guess that they're, they're a new and old market. They did have this the scouts, I guess, at one point, but yeah. that wouldn't. I think really this next swing has. I, I think the next swing has to be a lock and loaded swing, right? Like I don't like for for financials, considering what's going on right now. Like you can't. How well, bad is it? Guys? Seattle already. How bad is it from what you've heard? Well, I mean, they're asking for thirteen percent deferrals. I think it's bad. On top like of the, the other ones. See, Tim, thank you for bringing that up because I've, I've been confused by this story. So are they, they're asking for 13% deferrals on top of the 10 that they've already Correct. agreed to in the CBA? 
or is it just up three percent to thirteen? I uh, I got it in front of me, and I because I'm confused by that story. Unless anyone else wants, if it goes from ten to to a quarter, that's crazy. If it's, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna get players agreed to, but players agreed to seventy two percent of their gross pay uh, for the upcoming season with a ten percent deferment. Deferment in English, <laughs> a twenty percent escrow, and now an additional thirteen percent salary deferment, which would drop the players' gross pay to about sixty-two percent. But they don't have to prorate ten percent. But that's you're all, adding all this on yeah, top. Now deferment, to deferment means eventually the players will get, that get money. It. Yeah, unlike However, major league baseball players this year. Yeah. However, we're talking about sixty-two percent of where you once were for this upcoming season if this is if this goes through if they play 48 games how unfair is that Ooh. now it's it's i'm not i'm not the one playing so it's easy for me to say well we've already heard it's 60 games right like that's the latest number it's down to with 60 every games. day with every and ask me about this later for the show tim it's a good discussion every day that goes by we play this game with baseball you're welcome for the warm-up show by the way <laughs> <It's great. laughs> who, who are you kidding we're, shoot, we're shooting all of our best shots right here yeah. by the way right, Dangle, don't, don't, don't tweet out tim and i have a show later it's a, <laughs> it's a secret i'm doing it right now secrets blown dick, <laughs> dick. i don't use that enough you dick. Call someone a dick. <laughs> yeah. it's great it's great anyway sorry what were Huh? No, but the good yeah. thing the good thing about the Larry Brooks story from last yeah, night is the players the players sound like they're not being dicks about it. <laughs> yeah. Some some I mean Elliot last night on Central was saying obviously some players aren't happy, but it doesn't sound like all the players are unhappy and they want to play. And if the season's 60 to 55 whatever it is, is it the most unreasonable ask to defer? Here, no, Again, I, I don't think it is. Here's what's it. happening everywhere. The NFL, <clears throat> the NCAA, um, Major League Baseball for next year, the NBA for next year, and the NHL. Everyone is just trying to get it the bleep out of the way. However, we have to get through this, get through this, and pray, and pray that in October of next year, you can start up again and you can rejuvenate the business the way we used to rejuvenate the business. And everyone's seeing this vaccine now. And they're like, okay, it's not here yet. It's not, we're not quite there but everyone is just trying however way possible and this sucks for dudes who might be playing their last year or their first and only year and ken reed would write a book about them later on <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the, one the, pandemic only by yeah, one pandemic <laughs> only. As a, as a, you're welcome reed you're welcome That's another bestseller dick yeah <laughs> Forward by Jeff Merrick. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Not by. By the way, Dangle, right I heard I, saw, I heard you. I saw you on Twitter yesterday saying I'm 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 torn between trying to stay up to date and listening to jackasses on Twitter. Ken Reed is the play because lately, not only is Ken Reed giving you a little politics, but in the madness, he'll be like, "You want to see my Bernie Perrant from 1974 yes. card? Look at this!" <laughs> like he'll give you a little a little joy and a little hey, what you know? What about a peaceful transition? Like he's. he's, he's <laughs> It's becoming Ken is that my guy. favorite. Ken's my favorite tenth grader to follow on Twitter. Like he's <laughs> he's he's getting into social studies and whatnot, but also here's my hockey card collection, and I just I love it. I love it. The, the innocence of it. And but the he's trying. The the packs that he's opening are from tenth grade, which is wonderful. Yes. He's right? like, here's here's my score, nineteen ninety two. Each one of these cards is worth eight cents. Like. <laughs> And the yeah. gum. You know, and I, I always wondered why he never opened them back then. And I realized he's been golfing at Cabot since he was eight. Like <laughs> the, the guy, he's been he's like been golfing his entire life. No wonder he hasn't opened up. The if pack. he, <laughs> Kenny, if you're watching, if you really want to up your viewership, you'll eat the gum. Eat the oh, gum from no. the packs of cards. Tim, I've done it. Did we not try that? Did we not yeah, try we that on air? How yeah, was it? I, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, I did. You did. I tried the gum. You. Yeah, that explains it. It's gnarly. We, we, we only had one piece. D- Dangle, you've done it. I uh, like, you know how they have the cards for sale at uh, Jay's games? Yeah. Yeah. A few years ago, I bought a pack of cards that I swear to God was older than I am. And I ate, I ate the gum. It was very not nice. Crunchy. But I survived. Crunch. Like we're talking about, <laughs> like it just w- went into powder in my f- mouth. Mummified. That's- there, I said it. Yeah, it was. I read on. I read on like Twitter. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and just punch my tongue like a McFist. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. what what were we talking about? What were we talking about? <laughs> I know we're through this season, and that's yeah. it. And just take the beating that you're gonna take, and then mm-hmm. hope for the best the next season. And listen, this these percentage points mean a lot of money to a lot of people, and I get why they fight over it, but I don't think fans really care. Like I think fans say, "Give me as many games as you can possibly give me." I feel for the athletes. I feel for the owners. I understand it. But just give me what I can get and let's move on. And hopefully by October, we're all playing the way we used to. Yeah. Jeez. Well, we'll see. I hope it's certainly looking positive, but it's sort of like, how do you, how do you get it out? And how do you, you know, we won't get it. One thing I don't much, understand but... is the whole, let's start at Lake Louise thing. Like I've never understood that. Like, what, what are we you are, man? About? What are you talking about? What, what, let's, let's have our opening game at some outdoor location where it takes a what lot. What do you like, are? Have you not, do you not follow any of these outdoor rinks online? Like it's the greatest phase on planet earth right now for the NHL is these guys. All I'm saying is as someone who is really worried about hockey coming back, just bring back hockey. I don't care. I don't care whether you go to the Yukon and have an outdoor. I don't care. (laughs) Just play a game. Just get the schedule outdoors. I don't care. Chicago guys. So it'll have to be in Chicago at some point, but, uh, but yeah, like, I mean, I, 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 to that to that end, at least it would be a show, right? If nobody can be there, if nobody can be in the arena, at least it's kind of in a cool location, right? Right. Like, why not center it between this is Sid? Have you ever seen a mountain in your life? Like, come on, man. The I beauty have. of that is what? What? <laughs> green screen it. <laughs> green screen. You have the money. Just nope. get a really big green screen. I once walked up Grouse Grinding in Vancouver. No I know way. mountains. No not way. ran. Walked. An 85-year-old woman destroyed me going up the hill. <laughs> destroyed me. So, it wasn't even close. So you don't think the beauty of that would capture people? I'll th- listen, man, you tell me the first game of the NHL season is X, I'll be there. It's, mm-hmm. But I, I just, I don't, my point is, like, I don't see the need in it. It's a nice idea. We're in a global are, pandemic. There's no are, need are there for not, any of Are there this, not, but I, I think the sooner, doing it like, anyway. to, to me, it's so much more important to set the president with local and federal officials that you can at least get in the arenas normally. Yes. Yeah. To me, that's more important than, hey, let's go to Mannheim and play a game with Leon Dreisaitl. It, like, I don't care. That's not, the, that's not important right now to anybody. Like, Tim, you just said, well, fans don't care about that. Do fans care about that? Fans care about one thing, as you said. Bring back. Bring back the games. Have any right. level of normalcy. Scotiabank, they, Rogers Arena, Rogers Place, they don't care. I don't why need do they this do outdoor 45 fluff. outdoor games a year? Because it captures them, What I'm saying is, uh, in no, terms because of the priority now, eyes, I don't care about it. I don't. It captures eyes that are not normally there. That's why they do those outdoor games. That's why those outdoor games are huge in the United States of America. So you can act like I know what you're saying, but you can also act like you know that more people will tune into a game that's being played in a place that's never been played I would before debate, I would that debate looks that. majestic. I would debate how many, <laughs> now, how many extra people when you I get said mystery, in the United States of America. When I said Mystery Alaska, you had a boner on the show. You were like, <laughs> what? <laughs> mystery Alaska? Let's do, now you're acting like Mr. Tough Guy, just do the only <laughs> things that we're supposed to do because this is what the, the health it's dictates ridiculous. in this. You know you would watch it and you know more people would watch a game beautifully centered between three sisters or Big mountains yeah. in Lake Louise. Yeah. And for the record, I, I have I have a boner right now. So don't <laughs> that that. that's not that's not the barometer there, I saw the, I saw the, right? I can't underestimate stand up right now. I'm like, in fourth grade, and teachers ask me to come to the blackboard. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna Jesse, sit. don't What's underestimate up? the likes on ODR Instagram. Like, yes. People like it, you know. That's <laughs> uh, now I I do I have to ask. Do you think this all Canadian division thing is going to happen, and is it going to oh, work? Yeah. Oh yeah gonna happen oh yeah i can't wait to say leafs take two of three from the habs oh that'll be like it's gonna be a baseball schedule it will be kind of fun won't it i can't wait i can't wait i think it's gonna be amazing do you think that it will finally be the thing that gets the leafs through the first round like i was thinking like they'll get to like go and play multiple series all season long and they'll be used to it do you know what i'm like i don't even mean i'm not trying to be a dick no but like (laughs) you know what i mean sort of like Wouldn't that be it's, awesome if they're like, well, we, we've been training for this. It's like, they really have. It's a genuine point and genuine question, which is the worst part of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst part of it all. There's but, no hot, there's no high end and there's no low end outside of Ottawa. But I think that Ottawa will be a little bit better this year. Yep. But if you look at the, an all Canadian yep. division and it sounds like they're not going to play anyone else. Like the latest proposal is 
you're not playing outside the division. So it'll yeah. be those seven teams all year for 60 games. And the, the part that pisses me off about, like if it's for one year, that's great. I think we'll all enjoy it. And hopefully it'll help uh, our parent company's revenues that Canadian teams are playing Canadian teams every game. So the numbers might be higher than what we've seen in sports, but like we're going to eliminate Canadian teams again that might have made the playoffs. And here we are in 1993 still waiting for, that's the only thing that pisses me off about all this. And I know that there's Canadian players on the teams that win the cup, but Canadian fan bases haven't celebrated a, uh, a Stanley cup championship since 1993. And that to me, like, think about it. 67, 89 for the Flames, 90 for the Oilers, 93 for the Habs. Never Winnipeg, never Vancouver. And they're handing teams like Vegas a head start, and they're going to do the same thing with Seattle. So whatever gets me to the point where a Canadian team or their fan base is able to celebrate a cup, I'm happy with. And I think maybe this will get us closer. I'm going to settle for fun because – I think it'll be super fun to have the all Canadian division. And I had some people message me like, well, you know, then Canadian teams are going to eliminate Canadian teams. And I'm like, man, the furthest Canadian team this past year was Vancouver. And it was game seven in the second round. Like we're, we're well past that. Yeah. And Vancouver checked out after game four. Of that right. Thatcher Demko Let's was there. Honest. It yeah. was Thatcher Demko and just 18 guys who could have worn guy on the back of their jersey <laughs> and or they could have they, or gee yeah. yeah or gee yeah. that's okay that's okay yeah. shout out alex burrows you know for sure we're, but it's like it's it's a legitimate point but we're beggars cannot be choosers and all seven canadian teams are beggars right now yeah well what if four canadian teams get out of that division tim does that make it better for you well but like so four canadian teams like for the postseason we'll, no, I know they, teams they get out. They will, they will. But do you think, if you look at the trajectory of the teams, would they have done that? Like, I mean, think of the Pacific teams. Like, okay, I know you guys are Leafs and Leafs and Leafs and Leafs, and this will, this will, this will obviously uh, take Tampa and Boston out of the equation, which is good, I think. Yeah, the Leafs taking Tampa and Boston out of the equation. I've been saying that's ridiculous for three years now. So for the Leafs, I think it's good. But the California teams. Are, uh, I don't know how you say this, Papu. Um, and all those Pacific Division teams just got taken out of that division and put into a division with better teams. Mm-hmm. So uh, outside of Ottawa, is Montreal better? I think Montreal is better. They are better. They are better. And, and they beat yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Right? So for for the Leafs, I think it's better. But the overall, the overall like winning percentage of the division isn't that bad. Well, I'm wondering too about the uh, uh, Montreal specifically is weird because they finished 23rd of 24 that made it into the plans. And then they, oh, they were 24. So Chicago is 23. So they, you know, they do beat Pittsburgh and that's, and then they played Philly pretty well. But I have to say they were still 24th in the league and they made all, you know, they got Joel Edmondson. They brought in uh, Jake Allen. They brought in, uh, they got a great deal on Toffoli. But it's sort of, I mean, is that, are those going to be, uh, is that going to be Josh Anderson as well? Yeah. Josh, Josh Anderson is going to make it. Josh Anderson, yes. And if he's yeah. healthy, what a great player! It's just sort of like it seemed like a a go for it summer for a team that's not close to go for it territory, but they're stacked in prospects and picks. I don't know what are your thoughts. They did it in a very different way, though. Like they like it was interesting to watch teams pick up players and who they picked up because what's gonna, what's about to happen here? A really short condensed season. They pay Jake Allen starter money. Mm-hmm. to back up Carey Price because they want Carey Price fresh should they get to the postseason. So and there's going to be a lot of games in a short better. period of time. Mm-hmm. And that's an issue with Carey. So you want to keep, so now he's fresh. And then they look, it looks like for an expansion draft, they're covered off goalie wise. If it gets to that, it, they're tougher up front. Uh, they're tougher in the, in the blue line. Like it just makes, and you, you hope Suzuki and, and Kotkaniemi can continue to look again. I, I'm not sure how much to read off of like two weeks of hockey from those guys. But uh, everyone in Montreal seems convinced, surprisingly. So um, teams, teams are, are building towards the shortened schedule in different ways. I think they did smart things in Montreal. I am not the biggest Mark Bergevin fan, but I think he did some intelligent stuff here. And, the, and it, was, it was time for both Max and the team to kind of just separate. I think it was healthy for both. Uh, Max got his money, so shout out to Max. Um, I like what they did. I like what they did. I don't think they're going to be a 24th team in this league. 
however this looks. They'll be a little, they'll be a little bit better. And if Suzuki and Kakanyemi are better or continue to grow, uh, I think they're a good team. I think they're like 15 good. It's pretty good. And it's going to be great for them in the Canadian division. Because if it's top four, I mean, you got to think, you hope the Leafs are in there. Although, man, <laughs> I don't know. Not the way they played last year. Uh, you got to think Vancouver's, I don't know if they're going to take a step forward, but they're going to be probably at least as good, question mark. Um, you know, losing their starting goaltender is tough, but they still have Thatcher Demko. Uh, <sighs> they did get Nate Schmidt really for a bag man. of pucks. Yeah, Mark Markstrom was really good. I don't know what yeah. Demko is, and I don't know what Holtby is at this point. Like, so then, and I'm a big fan of Vancouver. 100. Uh, percent They've got a lot of great stuff going on there. Just some bad deals that kind of prevented them from keeping the players they wanted. Is Calgary the best Canadian team on paper right now? Lose it. Listen, the the Leafs messed up Calgary a bit because I'm a TJ Brody guy. I'm a big TJ Brody guy. Last year, he had the health issue during practice. It wasn't, wasn't the same as two years ago when he was a monster for them. An absolute monster. If he can get back to two years ago, and I think he can, I mean, the, that Leafs blue line looks a lot different. A lot different. And Calgary's going to miss him. Calgary's going to miss him. And Ham- I mean, Hammonick's gone too. They lost a few guys in that blue yeah. line. Yeah. Can I go pick up my kids from school? And yes, back? go. go. <laughs> we may still be going, Tim. We I'll, may I'll still be going. Back. I'm not you gonna sure. you going to come back? Yeah, I'll come back. It's, awesome. it's, right, it's right next door. Don't worry. Okay, I got yeah, lunch go. made already. We're good. <laughs> That's awesome. I knew somebody Drive had safe, to Mikhail. Sure. It's real life, yeah. man. That is. It's real life. Is he just leaving his thing on? Yeah. He's, he's coming back. Okay. He's leaving. You. Dude, man, Roger's internet. We don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> Just let that baby run. Let her run. Let her run. I'm going to send six pictures at once. And I'm nuts. <laughs> you guys got to talk matter. to your remote also. Yeah. Oh, how are, uh, I love guys, how are, my remote. How are you guys doing? Because I've been listening to you guys for eight months. You guys Thank have been God phenomenal. you asked. You guys have been phenomenal. Honestly, you guys have done a great, great job. And uh, Tim will echo it. I didn't just start saying this because Tim left. He's going to maybe think I did. You guys have been great. You guys have been natural. You guys have been honest. You guys have been teaching me about the American Civil War. You guys have been uh, going down guys. roads that um, the, the, your, your spotlight on women's hockey and the professional game and, and what the future is and what the present is. I think it's been fantastic. Uh, Harner Ryan Singh interview last week was great. I just think you guys I'll should be, be back in a second, guys. I just Bye, in a second. <laughs> <laughs> it, it won't take long. <laughs> he's wearing a mask. He, he strictly he came back to show us he's wearing a mask. But he's Good not an anti-masker. <laughs> he's not an no, anti-masker. Not. I just think um, you guys have been doing a great job. You don't have to answer, but I think you guys have been amazing. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. So kudos to the whole crew and keep it up. Hockey will be back before you know it, man. Yeah. And, and, and Gary Bettman, Elliot Freeman's been saying this a, a long time, and he said it again last night, and he's bang on. When Gary Bettman wants to do something, it gets done. You think that's, Jan that's how we, uh I'm not as convinced in Jan 1. Where do you guys stand on Jan 1? I'm not convinced. I, I can't see how that's possible. I can't see how that's possible. If it's 48 games, then who cares, right? Then you can go to January 15th. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's been done before. But I don't see Jan 1. I've seen enough that I can't believe Jan 1, but I've heard enough that I can't believe Feb 1. I think you nailed it with Jan 15th. And it's a bit more runway. A bit more runway. Just a tad bit more runway. You You get to see if the vaccine starts the zombie apocalypse or not, right? You get to see how that works. You know that, yeah. I think we'll all have that in the back of our minds. No one wants to say it because we watch AMC. No one wants (laughs) to really say it. (laughs) Jesse and I have both said we'll line up all day the first day it's available to get it. Oh, yeah. uh, and and TJ uh, in the studio this morning at Virgin Radio was like, well, like, what about like the long-term effects? And we're like, hopefully they're better than whatever COVID's long-term effects are. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> and, yeah. and let's be honest. It's 2020. I don't want my, don't want starts... my lungs to look like Chef Boyardee after yeah, exactly. the microwave. <laughs> like, I'll take that long-term effect over the other one. Yeah. Like, sorry, Steve, go ahead. No, it's, it's 2020. If the vaccine does start the zombie apocalypse, how long will it take anybody to notice? A very when, long when the cable, time. When the cable news networks get knocked off air, I've seen enough video game trailers yeah. to know that when, when TV gets knocked off the air and you're Will Smith putting in like old New Year's Eve videos in, in I Am Legend. And I Am that's Legend, when, yes. That's, that's, when, that, that's when you know Ish is getting real. Well, it's that's gonna be, when you know. That's going to be you and Tim, though. 
is going to be you guys knocked off. So we're the, the zombies, or we get knocked zombies. off here? <laughs> no, no, yes. by the zombies. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd be a really sarcastic zombie. You think so? I'd yeah. I'd be like, Brains. hey, you know, oh yeah, your brain is better than all the others. Sure, just let me have it. <laughs> let me have it. Watch your brain. Who actually? Who lasts longer? You or McAuliffe? Like survival in a zombie. Apocalypse. I would. McAuliffe confronts things more, so I think he'd get it first. I'd run. Okay. Right. Uh, I'd, I'd survive just strictly on cowardice. I think I'd survive. <laughs> uh, I, I learned everything I need to know. Yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd be Will Smith with my cat in the bathtub, <laughs> which is hearing all the chaos. I Am Legend taught me a lot, man. That's a good movie. It's people, great. People need to watch it. It's a good movie. A really good movie. Um, yeah, I think. Oh, is he? He's hey, back already. Hey, hey, look at that. Hey, hey, look at that. All right, are you living in the school? <laughs> Oh, His kids are actually homeschooled and he never told yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Tim. Yes, sir. You get your headphones on. Uh, we, yeah, yeah. we were just asking Sid, you know, if the, if the vaccine does start the zombie apocalypse, who do you think lasts longer? You were Sid. <laughs> Sorry, what did I miss? Conversation took <laughs> a turn when you left. Conversation took a, bit took of a, a turn, turn. But we'll get back to the NHL in a second. Uh, who do you think lasts longer? We have Sid's answer. We're not going to tell you what it is. What, who do you think lasts longer? Me or Sid? Yeah. Oh, if, if it's not me, like, well, let me think about this. Now, do you have to defend yourself in any way? Probably, Probably. at some point. Like Donovan, yeah. Dead, they okay, then it's, the me. then it's me. Then it's, then it's me. Correct answer. That's if what it, I said. If it's yeah. barricading yourself in your house with arrow bars, he's good. <laughs> like, Tim, I basically said between the two of us, you're the one that would go outside and say, listen, can we talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> and you would get it first. For sure. For sure. For oh, sure. You, think, you think I would get it first? Because you would be more heroic in certain instances than I. Like, you would be like, well, we're out of cotton balls. I got to go to the oh, store. And I'd be like, I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to stay here and use my wind up radio and listen to Virgin and I'll be good. Listen to Adam. Because, you know, Adam's sure. working through the apocalypse. Yeah, we basically no, already did. Yeah. All of you have already worked during the apocalypse. I demand your radio show stay on the air. Still after. doing ghosting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. literally <laughs> so the zombie left eating. me didn't call me back I don't know why <laughs> let's get Paul right. and see if he's breathing <laughs> we got Teresa in Brampton go ahead <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right <laughs> and then you play Taylor Swift so what was the first date like <laughs> <laughs> You know what bothered me? My zombie didn't wear a mask. I was offended. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, let's throw it to the listeners. The Is that a deal breaker? Anyway, 99.9 Virgin Radio. <laughs> and the play is gonna play, play, play. Oh my god, <laughs> Steve! How come you were never a top forty DJ, man? It could have been that. Could have been the career for you. <laughs> That's a shame. During a, an apocalypse, maybe that'll be my opportunity. Jackson, TJ, they don't quite make it. And then it's you, me, and Jesse. <laughs> but like Dangle does the late night, like old school songs about Maple Leafs version of radio. Like he's smoking oh. late at night. And, hey, mm. it's the Dangle Quite dial. Soon. It's the Dangle dial. dial. Here comes clear the track. Here comes Shaq. Here in the Dangle dial. Let's roll Ooh. it. Boom. Like Ooh. sexy it up. Late like night that. guy. It's, it sounds you like you sexy? like the Dangle dial about as much as Jeff Blair. <laughs> <laughs> that was BS. <laughs> Blair loved the Dangle dial. He loved it. That's the Blair shtick, and I love it. I love Jeff. He's one of my favorite people and broadcasters. Oh, he loved every second of it. Can I can I tell you my one Jeff Blair story? No, because it's very Jeff Blair. Uh, I, I was uh, filling in for I. It was Bunkus or uh, it was Ennis or Bunkus. One of the it was two. The on, Mid Morning on Good show. show. Yeah, so it was on the Good Good Show, and uh, and uh, Kevin Barker walks in for the Baseball Central, and he's like, "How y'all doing?" And like, real nice. Like the, Kevin's the best. He's so nice, and then. Jeff walks in and I'm like, hi, Jeff, how are you? And he's like, bad. And, I, and he just stared at me and I was like, okay, I'm going to go then. See you later. And that is the only interaction I've ever had with Jeff Blair. But I know it's a shtick. <laughs> just- <laughs> that was your only in-person interaction in person. with Jeff Blair. Yes. On the phone, um, he, uh, we were talking about baseball and he just decided, he called into, no, we were filling in filling for in Jeff. For him. Because he called into his own show <laughs> and starts going on a rant about Marcus Stroman and calls him a narcissist. And then we check and he's blocked the station on Mar Yeah, <laughs> Maria St. Alban ran in and was like, Marcus Stroman just blocked us. <laughs> we were like, we were like, <laughs> and this is like our first day. And we're like, 
Yeah. Well, we thought Dave Cadeau, who is the program director at the fan, was going to kill us, but uh, he was pretty. Did you guys like doing radio? Like that way? No. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, but, you know, it's the same as this, right? Only there's some commercial breaks uh, and probably a little more structure. Yeah, some. <laughs> yes. We got to go, guys. 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 Great segment. And so Sid and I hear every show. Is that right? Or we get We are long-winded. To be fair to everyone we work with, we can Tim and I can fill an hour. For better or worse, we can fill an hour. Like well, that's, that's how you can... started, right? You were podcasters. Yeah, exactly. Right. They exactly. just started to let me run long. Because uh, Steve, Steve, Steve. Uh, yeah, just screw it. We we don't gotta pay bills. That's great. That's... <laughs> my fight, my fight is always old school podcast. Like if it's a good conversation, shut up. The commercials will come. Like if it ends up being a short segment, who cares if the audience, the goal is to have the audience engaged. So, so if you're engaging the audience and maybe we're not, and then you tell us this is boring, let's, if you tell us let, this is boring, let's move on. I'm we boring. have a pretty good gauge though, Tim, on boring or not, right? Like what, what do you ah, not so, say? Sometimes I think we lose I, it and we're just I, entertaining ourselves, but whatever. I, think you're, you're well, being I need my sanity. We have to do that sometimes. <laughs> like we have yeah. to, I'm sorry. If we can't entertain ourselves. What's the fucking point? Well, but that's what What's these guys are doing and everyone's jumped on board. Like yeah. that's, that's the whole point is that you engage, you have fun and then people go along with you. And if you're constantly trying to get to break, it's annoying. But so you we weren't alone, Steve. And if you're engaging, then who gives a bleep when you go to commercial break? Oh, I, Stack was really, them all up. I was really engaging talking about calling up Bo Bichette. I knew everything. <laughs> I knew <laughs> lots. He's Hey, don't he's do been, that. Dangle. Don't do that. He's been don't pretty do good. That. If, if he you wanted been, to immerse yeah. yourself in other stuff for the sake of a three-hour talk show, which which that would necessitate, oh, yeah. and you know that, don't act like you couldn't do it. Don't act like I, you couldn't go out there and talk about whether or not the Steelers are a legit 9 and 0 team if you did some research on it. I felt I like I did it. I've seen I, you in that environment. I've yeah, worked you with you. I know you could. You work with me and then I never got invited back, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that did for my confidence? <laughs> We're going to have you on March 13th, but shit happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> <You're a book. laughs> You were both. I'm sorry. Uh, no, by the by the end of my radio experience, I was like, I, I can do baseball. I'm I'm smart. I can do baseball. And I wonder how much of that was just uh Scott MacArthur holding my hand. Mm. <laughs> Scott's good. Scott's just real good. Real good. He does this thing where like it's okay, we're going back to air in five, four, three. And then he does this disgusting thing where he clicks both elbows by going like that. And it oh, throws me off every time. And like, I'm in the middle of being disgusted. And he's like, welcome back. Sports and FI. <laughs> like, Scott. Would you want to do that, though? Would you want to know? Like, because sometimes it is a pain in the ass to follow everything and have to be an expert on everything. Like, it's it's hard. No. Like, sometimes I wish I could just focus on one sport. It's... I've started to... Okay, do you watch South Park? A little bit, not. Uh, nah, no. I respect I how long it's been on the air, but I'm not like that with South Park. I'm not. Damn, like that. there is an episode where Stan becomes a professional guitar hero player, but then just to escape, man, he starts playing other video games. But <laughs> but then he he stops being as good a guitar hero. That's me with basketball. It's like. When I'm just like, when the Leafs are on a long losing streak, I'm just like, ah, I'm just going to listen to like Shaq and Charles Barkley make fun of each other. <laughs> and I'm just going to watch a, like a Shaq uh, dunk compilation from when he was with the Magic. And I'm just going to, I'm going to watch this documentary and that documentary. And then I realized I've missed nine trades. <laughs> and I'm just a little bit behind. That's, that's how it is. And that's just one sport. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, now you have to know where, what the Raptors are going to do at 29 tonight. Like, how could I possibly? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I even, the thing I is, I don't know if the Raptors know right now what they're doing at 29 is the beauty of it. So who knows? Like, there are – I think I'm entrenched in hockey, and then I get the nerds going, Avchinikov is still available in the fifth, and if Kyle Dubas doesn't take him, I'm going to renounce my fandom for this team. And I'm like – for the 175th overall guy who you there's no way you would recognize him there's no way in the world so i think i'm a super fan and then the draft comes around and i realize no i just kind of yell 
<laughs> I just kind of get upset. <laughs> do you guys um uh, do you guys ever get tired of um uh and I hate yes. to ask these questions. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, when you're doing sports, it's like religion, right? People are that passionate about it. And you know, you could have, I mean, it's almost like sometimes you you know when you're gonna you, you know when you're gonna piss some people off. And Sid, you're particularly good at going after Leaf fans, and I love it. Is he? Uh, <laughs> it's really good. But it's a uh, I, I've always wondered, you know, long term, how do you deal with the butt actually crowd on a level that you guys are on? Because it's a national show, you got to hit every market. You got to be sensitive to every market. And it's, you know, Canada is very, like, very regional, right? The region to region, it's very, very different. Um, sport to sport, it's very, very different. And then you got to know the NFL uh, backwards. And, you know, you got to deal with people that are like, you know, insane uh, playing five different uh, leagues on their phone with their fake teams. Uh, you know, how do you deal with all of that? And, and do you kind of let it roll off your back? Does it ever get to you? Like, how do you handle that? Because we get it on a micro level with hockey. I mean, I'll let, there's there's two questions there in terms yeah. of the, the other markets, and um, Tim, if you could just shut up for a second, because I'm going to compliment compliment you immensely. <laughs> um, for for most of the show, like I, I I'm late to the to the we got to service all the markets uh, thing. Tim has been on that from the beginning, like from the second we started any any national TV we did at, at the fan. Tim was very cognizant of that. Uh, me not so much, but like. As, as I've traveled a little bit, as we've done it, and as we've traveled a little, it's very hard on Toronto radio to tell your bosses you're not doing Leafs at six o'clock every day. There are shows that do that, and they're great shows. But we don't do that. And that's a tough sell for some of our bosses. But the reason we do it, and the reason Tim's pushed it as much as he has, is you have, like, no one services all the markets like that. Nobody. No national show really does it properly. Sportsnet even tried with regional shows like 10 years ago. And I, I, I good luck. Like, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But we try. We try. And we had Michael Buble on last week. And in the middle of the interview, he's like, I like how you guys talk about Vancouver the way people talk about Toronto. And he, and he, he hit that. And I'm just like, yeah, well, that's why. That's why that's a smart idea. That's why that makes sense. Because there, there are amazing hockey fans all over the place. Mm -hmm. And nobody really tries in that way. We try. Macau's been grinning for 90 straight seconds. Well, because what, it, what, what is going through your head? There's two things that make one. I don't know that it's not a fool's errand uh, to try and do yeah, that. I didn't say what, that. I didn't say what, it. Because what Adam is saying is that how do you do the butt actually? And oh, I was getting to that. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. no, I was getting so, to that. So for me, when you're saying all that, I'm thinking like Jesse hated me for many reasons when he worked in the show. <laughs> Jesse, was one of those reasons that you hated me not, I constantly said to you, you have to watch what the other markets in Canada are doing. Is that yeah. not one of the reasons why you turned and ran from us? No. <laughs> I came in there and I thought, hey, I'm going to post this Cal Dubas meme and it's going to get 20,000 likes. And Tim would tap my shoulder and be like, hey, if you post these eight Leaf memes, you got to post eight Flames memes. You got to do eight Canucks ones. You got to do eight Jets ones. You got to do all the markets <laughs> because we have fans in all those cities. And because the show does a great job in servicing the entire country. And Jesse was like, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really Jesse. It sounds like Jesse. Yeah, that sounds like <laughs> You did Kyle Dubas's head on DeMarcus Cousins, right? For the Nylander contract negotiations. Yeah. Swat. yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, it's, it's a big part of the great. show <laughs> those contract negotiations gave this pod a lot of material oh yeah oh, anyone who says they didn't like the only one I'll hear the complaint from is Kyle himself everyone else can shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> all of us here benefited from Marner and Nylander and my only regret is Matthews didn't take it to the wire because that would have been epic that would have been absolutely amazing but he took the five years and ran as any of us would. Five years. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the other part of your question, Adam, the yeah, but crowd. I, I don't give a shit what people think of me. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to be as honest as I can. Tim's my, Tim's my base. Tim is the one who reads other sides of tweets on air. I don't normally do it. But I deal with the yeah, buts by not looking at the yeah, buts. Because I know they're there. They're not going anywhere. 
now I got to deal with fleets. I don't know what the hell this is. Like Twitter's complicated enough. Yeah. What do you mean you don't have IG don't stories? Get don't get <laughs> They're it. Just stealing <laughs> things. Go ahead. They sorry. are stealing things. But like <laughs> either either you pay attention to that or you don't pay attention to it because it's not leaving if you're opinionated or live in the worlds that we kind of live in. It's not going anywhere. No one thinks we deserve the jobs we have. No one thinks we should get paid. No one thinks we deserve a platform because they're smarter than us. Well, then come get my damn job. So don't pay attention to any of that stuff. I swear, it's very hard for some people not to pay attention. I understand that. <laughs> but I don't care what people think of me. So I get paid to come out here and have a conversation with Tim and you guys and maybe poke at the bear at, uh, well, I'm having my coffee at oh. 9.30 in the morning on Twitter, we're and then I go all, along with my day. That's what I do. Paying you. But it, it, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah we're not paying you. We're not <laughs> paying you for this. <laughs> 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 Oh, they've got a deal that oh, I didn't get. He sorry, thought it was sorry. a paid appearance. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sid. Is Jiffy is Jiffy not sponsoring this? They're sorry, not. they're not. <laughs> wow, you really do listen. Oh my wow. god. Wow. <laughs> That's scary. Sid. Tim, you... Tim, please follow up on what I said though, Tim. Tim, Tim has Tim has different oh, opinions. Yes. No, 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 no. Dangle, go. Please follow up. Please. He's no, he's no, telling I'm... the truth. Go ahead, Dangle. Well, so Sid, you did not tweet for a long time. Correct. And now now you tweet. Why? Needed a break. Mm. <laughs> I needed a break. Mm. Just, just, just. I needed to decompress. Just de- needed the, to decompress. Uh, actually, though, like even though you are on that level, and he's not lying, he is on that level of not giving a bleep. There's you still get affected by it. After after like I, it takes a while to get me to that point, but it was like it was it was about a year. Uh, it was a year before the, the last uh, the the last World Cup, like the 2018 World Cup. I didn't tweet for like a, like six months. I remember so that. retweets here or there, but and then I I actually called Tim <laughs> the day the World Cup was going to start in Russia. It was like a Friday. I called Tim. I'm like, is it weird if I just start tweeting out of the blue? He's like, no, it's not weird at all. You need a break. You need a break. Just because I kind of six month break. I'm a huge soccer fan, so I felt I, I wanted to get involved in that BS because mm-hmm. it's fun. Uh, so. Uh, but I just need I just needed a timeout because at some point Tim's right. It uh, when you when you pile it all up, when you pile it all up, it's like I need a I need a break because it's also the the daily. What are you tweeting about? Right. It's not just after, especially now. It's not like after what games do we have? Some NFL. Like what are you tweeting after? Like what's the? There's no David Ayers incident right now. Like what are you tweeting about? <laughs> Which there's no one's no one's literally no one's getting signed in the National Hockey League right now. What are you tweeting it? I turned on what, sports what the other day and it was university soccer. Whew. I've never seen that. Where? I think it I, was us. <laughs> I think it was Sportsnet. Tim, Tim that's not us, is it? Uh, you sports shut down. No, I mean it could have been American States. university no, no. soccer, like yeah. Oxford or wherever that is. Oh, that would be England. That would be England, England yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that's a really smart Tier school. Three. Yeah, they stopped <laughs> rowing, picked up soccer, <laughs> quit rowing. But there was Corona in the in the lake. That, that's why you don't know it, Steve. <laughs> you got to put anything. Steve, on. did you just let out of the bag that Oxford's no longer rowing and just doing soccer? Is that another super? <laughs> 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 well, it's just, you know, what I've, I've always wondered that because, you know, everybody's got their moments with social media, whether you've got 500,000 not- followers or five, right? It's sort of everybody's had it. So, you know, you guys have it on a pretty intense level. You're trending every afternoon uh, with whatever you want, whatever you feel like make trending. So I kind of wondered, you know, how, how you deal with it, because it's a different level than most of us will ever experience. <laughs> I, the one thing I'll add to it, and it's not like I'm different than Sid. I do get affected by it. I admit that I get affected by it. And I try and take it into consideration when we're doing the show that there are other opinions. But we also have to understand that, like right now, 60% of it is not real. Mm. Like even in sports, it's not people wouldn't say things like I read things to Sid during the commercial break all the time that we don't put on the air. And I just ask them, like, this person's not really saying this, are they? And they're not. They wouldn't say that to your face. They wouldn't say it to anyone else's face. But they'll say it on the internet. And 90% of the time, they're just trying to get some sort of reaction. And it works. It's the same thing with calls on old school radio. When you knew a guy, 
you knew the guy from Tony from Stony Creek was not really Tony from Stony Creek, but it was fun. So do it right. Like, you know, the reaction they're trying to get reactions. And if, if you judge it to be real, that's when it hurts the most. <laughs> right. Like, right. Yeah. If they're kind of sort of true, you're like, damn that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so you got to play that game. And that's the, like, I wish I was more like Sid. I'm not like Sid, but I think what I've gotten to the point is, is that it's not real. Like that's not real life. And the people who argue with the one eight seven nine four fives on Twitter, you, it's you. You're just Stop. wasting your time. You're wasting yeah. your energy. You're wasting everything. And to me, like with kids, that's like my biggest thing is teaching them what's real and fake on the internet. And I think we're getting to, the, I hope we're getting to the point where we all kind of realize that half of that stuff is not real. Now, but, but the follow-up is, I'd see, I know like some people might be listening or watching this and saying, yeah, but you also have a national television show. So if you don't want to pay attention to that stuff or if you don't want to tweet for a while, you can still, there's still, you still have a hell of a platform yeah. to get out whatever you want. And it's true. Like that's a valid point, but, um, well, that's it, why I don't tweet. Watch my yeah. show. I don't tweet yeah. much. If you want to hear my you opinion on show? this, watch my show. There's yeah. no conversation going on here. Like there's no back and forth. I'll have a conversation with people who completely disagree with me on my show. But when you do it on the internet, it's not what you get back. I never understand. I'll never understand till my dying day, the back and forth Twitter fight person. I'll never get it. Oh. It does. You get nothing, especially in our business. I don't care who you are. I don't care what level you're at. It's a lesson it for makes, everybody. It, it is. It is idiotic to have back and forths with people on Twitter who you do not know because mm. you are the only one amplifying their shitty opinion. No one on earth would know who they are. And I'm not saying no one deserves to know we're all human beings. We all like praise and blah, blah, blah. But if someone sends you a tweet that is either offensive or you don't like you amplifying it is the error. Their error is sending you that directly. And that's ridiculous for anyone to amplify that in my mind, it makes it way worse. It's it, make, it, give, it gives people a platform that don't deserve it. Right. They don't right. deserve it. So what do you do? What is the point of this? What, what are you really trying to get accomplished here? Are you telling me that there are, there are insensitive, bigoted, misogynistic people on Twitter? I got news for you. I know that. I know that. Uh, I don't, I was, you don't need to give this person a platform. They don't deserve it. They last don't. night I was talking a little bit about that. Like, can you believe? Yes. What it, can you believe that this person said, yes, what are you yes. new here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like there's a particular writer at the Toronto Sun who's perfect for engaging that crowd. And every time this guy puts an article out, he and we've had him on the show. Uh, but, you know, he every time he puts an article out, to, people are like, can you believe that he said and it's Steve Simmons I'm talking about. Adam, like, yeah. it's Steve Simmons. Oh, yes. yes. I can believe that. I was about that. to say, you got to stop talking shit about Terry Koshan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stop. The He's nicest nice man, man in sports. Nice <laughs> Best hair in, in, in sports journalism in Canada. Legendary Always. salad. Terry's legendary. main legendary. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Seisberger is pretty good, too. It's hanging in there, you know? He's another Z's. great Love guy. Uh, you know, it's one of those where you kind of go, yeah, you're, you're right. And I, I, I've always just... Um, I've always just wondered that about you guys, because again, every day, every day, all the time, different sports, and you get a different crowd for each sport. You get basketball, because you're doing basketball, football, hockey, baseball, all the time, cycle, cycle, cycle. Um, and I watch you guys so I can stay up to date on the other sports that I can't pay as much attention to. That's the thing, right? I'm able to actually derive my opinions on other sports from watching you and having the guests on, because I can't, I don't have time. Like, I don't know how you do it. And, and you made that point earlier, Tim, is that like, if, you know, if, if you're doing a three hour sports talk show, you got to be able to do all of that. That's a lot. It's a lot of research. It's a lot of reading. It's a lot of watching and that sort of thing. Um, when you guys see shows like, um, I've always wondered about this too. When you see shows like First Take, Undisputed, um, what are your thoughts on that format? Because you guys are not that at all. Like there's a, you guys feel like a podcast to me. Though That feels like, um, purpose-built arguments and they seem to do extremely well. What are your thoughts on them? Do you like them? Do you watch them? But we have a different opinion on this. Sid? Tim, you first. <laughs> <laughs> 
I bet we have a different. Uh, I, listen, um, I think I, I don't think Canada. I watch them. I like them. I understand them. I think their questions oftentimes are their genius and not the back and forth between the, the two setup. people because You're awesome, talking the setup, the setup. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The setup and the question is the genius on those shows and the back and forth between the two people or three people or whatever on it is very predictable to me. And the, the predictability is what bugs me. Uh, and I don't want our show to be predictable. And the one thing I love about working with Sid is that he's not predictable. And sometimes when I throw something out there and I know exactly where I think he's going to go and he makes that right turn, I'm like, this is how we're different from those shows. And we'll actually discuss the nuance after the whoa, look at this. I'm going to make a crazy statement and then we know it's going to go viral. There's some accountability after it. And for me, that's the one thing about those shows. And I think Canada is different than the States because Canada wants the accountability. I think the United States screaming and yelling in debate right now is ruling the roost in all levels, political, uh, sports. It's Pleasure. just... We yeah, weather people weather. just yeah. <laughs> so Low pressure system coming in Alberta. No, it isn't. It's like a big controversy. <laughs> Dude, the one, the one different. I'm calling for rain. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet my life on it. Anyway, sorry. This yeah, rain no. didn't show up because of Babcock. That's what happened to the rain. <laughs> Babcock didn't play the rain as much as he should. And what's to go? Lou Lamorello is here. You bet your ass the rain would have showed up. <laughs> and the what rain would have been face. No facial hair on the rain hair. either. Oh, in a school. suit. In a suit, and it would have cut its hair. <laughs> so all, all our difference is I want accountability. So for me, like I love those shows. Sometimes I <laughs> they lack accountability. And you'll see when someone calls someone else, they get mad. Oh my God, there's, there's going to be accountability. Whereas with Sid and I, I think part of the the, the thing that is the differentiator that I hope people appreciate is that if there ever is a spot where you're wrong, you're going to sing Despacito in Spanish on the air. Which was oh. just beautiful. Oh. Right. Just oh, it was gorgeous rendition. True, true story. Uh, Tim knows this. The Saturday of that week, I went to, uh, there's a Portuguese club here in Mississauga. My folks go all the time. And they have live bands. And the live band that night watches Tim and I religiously. They're out of Cambridge, Ontario. Religiously. Sag. Hey, Cammy. Hey. Look How's at that. Going, Tim, Tim with hair. Look and at that. The OVO. Look at that. <laughs> Love it. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, nice OVO sweater. Look at that. Nice OVO sweater. Thanks. Can I be Thanks. honest with you? When it's when it's just me in the frame with Tim, he never smiles like this. <laughs> <laughs> he is, kind, he is kind of excited that I'm on Dangle. What does Dangle do all the time? Yellow leaves. <laughs> That's the brand. That's shaping absolutely our youth. true. Shaping our youth, Dangle. <laughs> As always. As you always. Go back or what? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Hey, okay, Dangle, bye. just just eight, eight more years of no sleep before they get that big. <laughs> yes. That's it. So That's good. It. Just I'm eight sure more I'll years, be, Dangle. I'm sure I'll be exactly the same at the end of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I want to Portuguese my story. club. Portuguese, Portuguese, oh, yeah, Portuguese. Yeah. Tim, uh, Tim's heard this. He doesn't need here. Portuguese club, Mississauga that week, um, live band and, and it's a full flight, full flight. There's a lot of fish and coffee in the air. Just a great time. Mm. 500 people. I got a top on my shoulder. It's my dad. And he leans in and he whispers, they're calling you on stage. <gasps> so I walk in. Oh no. And I'm, I'm lit. I'm walking in. And on stage, and 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 uh, Sag says how much they watched the show, and they gave Alex Xero, my brother, who was from Six Eight News, and the fan a shout out. He was in the crowd as well. And they're like, "We saw you do Despacito on the show this week. My voice is a little hoarse. Can you help me?" So he's got an iPad with the lyrics in front of him. No, there's 500 people, and I said I didn't anticipate doing this in front of 500 people tonight, but we're here, so let's go. Wow. And, uh, uh, what's the Latin term for in, in wine? There's truth, veritas. What's the term? I, what's the I term? Think, I think I. Uh, Something veritas. Uh, I'm just I, trying to sound smart on this yeah, show. No, I, I, I hear the. I'm failing miserably. Something. So I, <laughs> I, I, I got, I got, I got on stage, and we, and it happened, 
and I will privately send the three of you the video <gasps> afterwards, which cannot air. Dangle, I swear to God. <laughs> Dangle. Okay, so send it to Adam oh. and Jesse. I okay. think I, I saw it. Uh, so, okay, so how about minutes. this? I'll oh, send it to Adam and it. Jesse. Yeah. Do not forward it to Benedict Twitter Arnold over here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the next time you, you see him in person, just play it off your phone. Do not okay. send it to him. Because Jesse, I trust. Adam, I trust. I believe Dangle's a national security risk. Yes. So I'm not going to no send it question, to him. No question about that. That's amazing. So oh, it I happened. And I got to be honest with you, I nailed it. Okay. I know. <laughs> better I know. on TV or better in, in like, are you just a better live performer? Would you no, say? No, TV. They were both different. Like, okay. uh, you know, the only issue with that Saturday night at the Portuguese club doing Despacito live was we didn't have McAuliffe's bellowing laugh, which is the best laugh. <laughs> it is a great Maybe laugh. Maybe a broadcast it television. A I don't know if people are aware of this. I say this often. And I mean it. It is one of, right up there with Greg Sansoni of, of Sportsnet, who had one of the greatest, who has one of the greatest laughs I've ever heard. But uh, I'll send you guys the video dangle. Just you, you deserve to be punished. Tim and Jesse are sort of the same where it, it feels like or at least when we feel on the morning show and, and on the on the podcast here, if we've made Jesse laugh, we feel like we've done a good job. Mm. And, and like because I'll laugh at anything. I'm just very easily entertained. But that's what kills me the most about the delay between us right now, because I know I got something on Tim, but I got to wait the half second and then <laughs> yes. I hear him. That's the most disappointing part to me, because I know like it's instantaneous. I can feel it coming. It's just I've missed that that. That that half a second has annoyed me for eight months. I don't know if I mentioned we've, that. Yet. You can see going. him waiting. You can see him waiting live on air. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> there'll, there'll be a pause. There'll be Is an he going to laugh? <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been going through old podcasts for like best of clips. And I was just, it's like watching a completely different show. Mm. It, it really is. It re I was like, oh God, I miss Adam and Jesse with their unique smells. <laughs> <laughs> the, the lack of half second delay yeah yeah and, hey, if cj is the fourth member like can we get in the queue for five six do you guys want to be five six work? do you want to be a part of that like we which, didn't I mean, which we one of you is coming it. off the bench <laughs> <laughs> i'll do that yeah, oh, Tim, yeah. What a guy. Lou, guy. tim's lou williams six man of the year uh, <laughs> and I'll be Montrez Harrell. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll be a six man like yeah. Lou Will. Basketball. Tim yeah. just went to the strip club for the chicken wings. <laughs> it's in the middle of a pandemic. You just had to get them, right? Yep. Lemon pepper. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, you know what, guys? You know what? That's the thing. Like we we uh, uh, privately every once in a while we get a message from one of you, and it's always so kind, and you've been so gracious to us from the beginning. We know, like, it's weird how long we've all known each other. Um, uh, and, and you guys have been so gracious to us from the beginning and, and so encouraging. And it's so, uh, um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a real pleasure to have you guys on. I, Jesse, I don't know if we're doing a press conference this time. Uh, uh no, I didn't solicit. We're not, we're not soliciting for that, but you know, I do want to say like, we are such huge fans. We love having you on. Thank you so much for, for making time for us. You guys are absolutely five, six on, on the, uh, on the STP, um, uh, members list, I guess. And uh, we're going to get those McFish shirts made. It's going to happen. Yes. <laughs> <And them too>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would. Uh, if we do make them, I do need you guys. We need to tweet out proof at least that you have them, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll send the picture to you. Dangle. No. Yeah. What, yeah. I, I, I don't know what the logo is and I'm a little scared, but whatever. <laughs> send it to one of the adults. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. It might just that's be letters. Problem. It's just letters. It might involve a yeah. fist. I think it might involve a fist. It's a terrible, <laughs> terrible thing that's happening. We'll, we'll, we'll have our listeners submit. They're pretty good on paint. So, oh, uh, no. but yeah, guys, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it'll be good. It'll be fun. It uh, very your message for days. I remember when we had, we had Kiprios on once, and he's like, "I'm still getting tweets about that show. I can't, can't believe it. It's just like it just doesn't stop." Uh, but great Kiprios suppression, by the way. Yeah. 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 I thought he was here. I thought he was here. Did you know hey, that Ronnie Dangerfield is Kiprios? What the I'm gonna make a Kiprios? No, he talks hey. out. He's got the side of his mouth thing. He's like, I can't even believe that he was on BT, and he's like, I can't believe he's it. From and Sicily, then all of a sudden, where did Kiprios come from? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> that area, you know, whatever. The that Mediterranean, area. it's all the same, right? The, the old Roman Empire. <laughs> wow. The Ottoman <laughs> Empire. Yeah, sure. um, he's, uh, he's a beauty, too. And it was funny, the, uh, this, that segment, actually, we were playing on fake ice, and he jerseyed me and punched me in the head. So it was really good. But he went from that to that, Kipper. Uh, <laughs> anyway, boys, we really appreciate your time. Uh, I know you're busy, 
being, you know, national TV guys and also fathers and, and, and everything else. I really appreciate My show today is going to suck, Tim. I'm telling you ahead of time right now. <laughs> I got nothing left. I got nothing. I regret nothing. I love these guys, but I got nothing left. This could be the worst slash best Tim and Sid ever tonight. I have no idea what's we'll going to happen. We'll be watching. <laughs> <laughs> we always appreciate when you have us on and we've uh, the it's the reciprocal uh support is felt too so honestly uh we love coming on and we love getting the notes from you guys every once in a while too so appreciate and, it and to be part of the uh uh shows with no sports fraternity that's grown in this country yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a select group there's there's about 12 of us 15 of us in there every day or every until twice a week or once a week so it's uh love you guys thanks thanks for having us on this is a lot of fun the Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.